I want to begin with a question. I want to begin with a question. I want to begin with a question. How many of you, I need you to respond to this now. I need you to respond. How many of you, every location, fill up your gas tank when it's just three-fourths full? I mean, it's still three-fourths. I mean, I mean, you still got almost a full tank, but you go gas it up when it's three-fourths full. Anybody? Anybody? Yeah, there's a few of you. Lord, touch them in Jesus' name. <laughs> They, they don't even want to get that thing to half full. Come on. Okay, well, how many of you gas your tank up, lift your hand, when it's half full, you gas your tank up? All right. Uh, how, many of you, how many of you wait till it's, it's three-fourths empty and you gas it up? Come on. All right. Now, come on. I, I want you to lift your hand now. How many of you wait till the gas light comes on to gas it up? Come on, where you? Where you? Uh, that's me. That's me right here. I wait till the gas light come on. That's what I know the Lord is speaking. Time to gas it up. One day I was driving down Broadway Extension 235, and, uh, you know, I'm used to following my gas gauge, and, and, and I knew the, 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 the light just came on. I mean, just came on, and I knew I got about, you know, I probably got another 40, 50 miles left. And, y'all, that gas gauge was wrong. I ran out of gas right on Broadway Extension. I didn't have time to pull over to the side of the road. I mean, woof. Done. Stopped in the middle of the road. Didn't have no baseball cap to hide because everybody driving by. It's embarrassing. There's the Pastor People's Church. I do. <laughs> ah! In life, you can run so hard and so fast and run out of gas. You can run out of gas mentally, physically, and emotionally. Listen, you can move so fast in life that you can misread your gas gauges. You weren't planning on running out of gas, but you find yourself with nothing left in the tank. You're showing up at work, at school, at home, in your relationships, and you don't even realize that you're running out of gas, that you're about to stop in the middle of the road of life. It was over a decade ago. I was running so hard. I was running so fast. Wasn't in a good place. I was going home. You know what it's like to be in your home, and you're there, but you're not there. That was me. I was home, but I was distant. I was disconnected from my family. I was unhealthy mentally, emotionally, physically. And to be honest, I wasn't reading my gas gauges correctly. I did not realize that I was running on empty, and I ended up running out of gas. I ended up in the heart hospital. I've shared this story throughout the years. I thought I was having a heart attack. I was having a stress attack. I was in a bad place. I was depleted. I wasn't planning on running out of gas, but I stopped in the middle of the road of life. Some of you are there today. And I want to take you to a story in the Bible about a man who wasn't reading his gas gauges properly, and he ran out of gas. And church, it almost cost him his life in 1 Kings chapter 18. A man named Elijah, a prophet, called fire down from heaven, and he defeated the prophets of Baal. And King Ahab, he heard about how Elijah had defeated the prophets of Baal, and he told his wife about it. And I want to read his wife's response. Some of you will be familiar with her name when he, she heard about how Elijah had defeated the prophets of Baal in 1 Kings chapter 19. If you have a Bible, and I'm going to pick up reading in verse number 1. If you don't, the scripture will come on the screen. It says, now Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah to say, may the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like that of one of them. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there. While he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, he came to a broom bush, sat under it, and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, 
He said, take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Elijah was running so hard and so fast, and he found himself in a bad place emotionally, physically, and mentally. He wanted to end his life. Church, what do you do when you're in a bad place emotionally and mentally? How do you begin to own your emotional and mental health? How do you own it so that you can keep yourself from running out of gas? Encourage you to take some notes today. I want to give you six habits to owning your health from this story. Six habits to owning your health. Number one is this. Own recognizing the warning signs of being emotionally unhealthy. Own recognizing the signs. And I want you to notice the warning signs that lead to, that, that kind of just led to Elijah running out of gas and stopping in the middle of the road of life. We see several signs. He was working hard. He just defeated the prophets of Baal. He just had this incredible victory. And shortly after the victory, the Bible says in 1 Kings chapter 19 and verse 3 that he was afraid. He was dealing with extreme fear. An extreme amount of fear was flooding his soul. His emotions and adrenaline, they were just at an all-time high. I mean, they were high. His emotions, his adrenaline. I mean, he just had this huge encounter with the prophets of Baal. And, and now his emotions are already high, adrenaline already high. And he has this huge threat from Jezebel. His emotions are all over the place. And now the scripture says that he ran for his life. He had no break after the prophets of Baal. He just kept going and going and going. He doesn't recognize that his gas tank is running low. And he kept pushing through, and he kept running hard. He kept running fast. And then he left his servant, the scripture says, and isolated himself. And he went into the wilderness. His, his gas tank was running low, and, and he went into the wilderness. He went all by himself. He isolated himself, and that was one of the worst things he could have done. And then he admitted that he had enough. He couldn't take anymore. He was overwhelmed. He was worn out. He was out of gas, and he said, I'm ready to die. The Bible tells us the warning signs that Elijah faced. And to own your emotional health, you have to begin to recognize the warning signs. Church, I want you to do that today. If you're starting to run out of gas, you got to recognize the warning signs, recognize the signs so you can do something about it. You say, Pastor, what are some of the signs I need to recognize? Well, just start to think, are, you, are your emotions all over the place? Are you fearful, worried? Anxiety, stress, depression, constant sadness or helplessness. Maybe you even have a medical, just a chemical imbalance and your emotions are out of whack. Maybe you find yourself with constant mood swings, erratic emotions, just all over the place, frequently crying. Maybe it's unhealthy responses to people. You always angry? Come on, anybody know any Christians always angry? Come on, lift your hand if you know some angry Christians. Come on. Like last week, I want to see who don't lift their hand. Amen. That's what I'm after. I mean, just unhealthy responses, just agitated, lashing out at everybody. Are you always tired, worn out, difficulty sleeping? Are you going at an unsustainable pace? Are you ignoring the Sabbath day, not taking off a day to rest once a week? Have you isolated yourself? Have you pulled away from your family and your friends and you're by yourself? Do you find yourself having a lack of interest in activities that you used to love? I'm talking about warning signs. You have a lack of focus. You're having a difficulty, just difficulty concentrating and giving your full attention to whatever you're working on. Is your performance declining? I want you to begin. To own your health by recognizing the warning signs. Be honest with yourself. Church, don't lie to yourself. If you're not doing well, you have to admit it. 
You may still have a little gas in your tank, but you're seeing some warning signs. Be honest with yourself so that you can get some help. You, you know, when you go to the doctor, the first question they ask is, what's wrong? What are your symptoms? And you don't tell them that your toe is hurting when your hand is hurting. Because if you're not honest about your symptoms, you will not get the right diagnosis or the right prescribed treatment. And some of you are trying to hide your symptoms. You're ignoring the warning signs. You're not being honest with yourself. And you're going to run out of gas in the middle of the road of life. Number two is this, the second habit. The second habit to owning your help. Write this down. Own evaluating how you got where you are. Own evaluating how you got where you are. It's so helpful to read this story about Elijah just to see what led up to him running out of gas. And there are times in life we actually see the warning signs. Some of you are seeing the running, the warning signs, and, and we know that we're running out of gas, but we never evaluate why. We never ask, what's causing me to run low on gas? And so many people are struggling, but they keep the, just going with the same schedule. They keep living the same lifestyle until they finally run out of gas in the middle of the road of life. And church, I want you to begin to recognize the warning signs and then ask yourself this question. How did I get to this place in my life. Why am I running out of gas? What do I need to own and change so that I can get to a healthier place in life? And as you evaluate, if you aren't sure what's causing you to run out of gas, if you're not sure what's causing you to get to this unhealthy place, point three is going to help you, help you right now. Just write it down. Own listening to spiritual guidance. Listening to spiritual guidance, 1 Kings chapter 19 and verse number 7 says, The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, and said, Get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. The angel spoke to Elijah on, a multiple, on multiple occasions. And church, I'm not focusing right now on the angel speaking to Elijah. What I want you to notice is that Elijah didn't listen to his own voice. When you're in a bad place, the worst person you can listen to is yourself. Because you don't see things clearly. You're in a bad place. Your perspective is clouded. Your brain is foggy. You're tired. You're in a bad place emotionally. And you need someone who is spiritually mature to speak into your life. Notice I said spiritually mature. I didn't say spiritual. Spiritually mature. Someone who walks with God, who knows God's word, who has proven success in their own life so they can speak into your life. Spiritually mature. And your natural tendency, my natural tendency, is when we're not doing well, is to do what Elijah did. And that's to isolate ourselves, to pull away from relationships. But you have to, when you're not doing good church, you have to force yourself to get around godly people. You need people who will speak the truth to you in love. People who will see what you can't see about yourself. People who are full of wisdom, full of the spirit, full of biblical wisdom so they can give you guidance. One of the best things some of you could do for your life do for yourself mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually is to get in a small group, is to own it, is to push through wanting to isolate yourself, push through the awkward feelings of what other people might think about you as you build relationships, but just press through that it can be a little awkward as well when you're just building relationships with new people, but push through and get in a small group. Why? Because you need some godly voices in your life that can help you get some gas back in your tank. Number four is this. Write this down. Write this down. I want to help you. Number four is this. Own doing the practical things. Own doing the practical things. Church, church, hear your pastor today. I want to help you. Sometimes we get too spiritual. 
we're in a bad place emotionally, mentally, physically. And then we try to get all spiritual. I'm binding the devil. I'm pleading the blood. Speaking in tongues. I'm anointing myself with oil. I'm confessing the word. I'm lifting my hands and praise to God. I'm speaking the name of Jesus. I'm declaring victory. I'm more than a conqueror. Come on. When you get real spiritual, you get that face. You know, start, start moving, quickening. And God says, God says, that's all good. But go take a nap and get some rest. You need you a nap is your problem. Talking about you plead the blood. You better go to bed. Huh? I want you to see what happens. Listen to Elijah in 1 Kings chapter number 19 and, and verse number 5. Here, here's, what the, here's what the Lord said. The angel of the Lord said, then, then, then he lay down under the bush and fell asleep. All at once the angel touched him and said, get up and eat. He didn't say, have an all-night prayer meeting. No, I said, buddy, buddy, you need to eat. You are hungry. He looked around and there by his head was some bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank and then lay down again. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, pray all night long. No, no. He said, boy, get up and eat for the journey is too much for you. Church, practical things helped Elijah. They'll help you. Elijah listened to the voice of the angel. He rested. He slept. He ate. Sometimes the most practical things can be the most spiritual things and can help your life out the most. The practical things can put some gas back in your tank. Practical things. Some of you need to get some rest. Some of you, you're working too hard. You got to take a day off every week and start getting some rest, taking a Sabbath day. Some of you today after church need to go home and take a nap. You need to start sleeping, going to bed earlier. Some of you need to figure out why you're not sleeping well. You need to figure that out. You need to start eating a good meal. You might have to cut out some fried food and some sugar. Eat a little healthier. Start exercising. Come on, go. Just go, go on a walk every day around the neighborhood. Just, just get your heart pumping a little bit. Maybe start going to the gym. Stop isolating yourself and get in a small group. I'm just simply saying this. Own the practical things. They will help you get some gas back in your tank. Elijah, get up and eat. Go back to sleep. Number five is this. Number five. You got to own these habits to get emotionally, mentally healthy. Number five is this. Own pursuing the presence of God. Own pursuing the presence of God. I want you to notice this in 1 Kings chapter 19, verse number 9. It says, there he went into a cave and spent the night, and the word of the Lord came to him. What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord all, God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, tore down your altars, and put your prophets to death with a sword. I am the only one left, and now, and now they're trying to kill. And how many know, I want you to, maybe you don't know this. This is not true. He said, I'm the only one left, and now they're trying to kill me too. But you don't think right when you're tired, when you're not in a good place. He wasn't the only one left, but I'm not going to preach that right now. It goes on to say, verse number 11, the Lord, the Lord said, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord. Whew. If you've got a paper Bible, circle the presence of the Lord. For the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? And I want you just to notice that Elijah owned getting into the presence of God. And what encourages me the most about this portion of Scripture is that it did not take some massive move of God for the Lord to work in Elijah's life. Matter of fact, God wasn't in the wind. God wasn't in the earthquake. I'm starting to wonder, though, here in Oklahoma, but that's a whole other sermon. But God wasn't in the earthquake. God wasn't in the fire. Church, the Scripture says God spoke to Elijah in a whisper. If you want to get some gas in your tank, 
You have to own getting in the presence of God. It's the small whispers of God that can change your life. It's the small spiritual disciplines that can put some gas back into your tank. Start praying and reading your Bible every day. It's a small thing, but when you do, you'll begin to hear the whispers of God every day. Get some gas back in your tank. Come to church every Sunday. Why? So you can experience corporate worship and hearing the preaching of God's word. God will whisper to you and fill your tank with gas. That's why we do the four-week challenge. It's not about crumble cookies. I hope you eat one. But it's to help you get planted in church so you can get some spiritual gas back in your tank. It's important to be in church. You're going to run empty. You're going to run dry if you try to do this without the house of God. You need spiritual gas to face the challenges of life. You have to own consistently getting in the presence of God. Nobody can own that for you. You got to own that. I got to get in God's presence. Number six is this. Number six is this. Write this down. On pursuing God's purpose for your life. After Elijah rested, he ate. He heard the voice of the angel. He got in the presence of God. And God told him, the next thing God told him was this, get back to your purpose. Get back to living out the reason I put you on the earth. And church, living out God's purpose will help you Get some emotional, mental gas back in your tank. Here's what you have to understand. Some of you didn't realize this, but you need to understand this beginning today, moving forward. You were created on purpose for a purpose. You are not an accident. You were created by God on purpose for a purpose. Notice it's about Elijah. Get back to your purpose. Get back to your purpose. 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 15 says, The Lord said to him, Go back the way you came and go to the desert of Damascus. When you get there, anoint Haziel, king of Aram. Also anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, king over Israel. And anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, from Abel, Mehola, to succeed you as prophet. Elijah, get back to your purpose. And Elijah had purpose again. He was going to go anoint some kings. He was going to spend the rest of his life mentoring Elisha to take his place as prophet. And living out God's purpose for his life, begin to put gas back into his tank. And it will do the same for you. You're created on purpose for a purpose. You, you know, I, when I go on vacation and it, it's rejuvenating, it's recharging for me. But there are sometimes I... I'm on vacation, I can get a little depressed. Get my batteries recharged, get refreshed. But I can get a little down. Just something about when I'm away from my purpose, a little, just, just, you know, maybe a couple weeks, and I can start to feel a little off. And I've just learned something about myself. Whew. God created me on purpose and for a purpose. And when I'm living out God's purpose for my life, it puts fuel in my tank. I mean, I got to rest. I got to rejuvenate. But when I'm living out my my purpose, man, I'm telling you, it energizes me. It motivates me. And you were created on purpose for a purpose. God created you to build his kingdom, to love people, to serve people, to make disciples, to help people know God and to grow in God. God's even created you for a purpose here at your church to to serve and to make a difference. Can I tell you, some of you, you don't realize this, but I got to help you today. You will get gas back in your tank if you get your eyes off yourself and get your eyes on your purpose. Some of your purpose is to start investing in kids. And when you start giving your life to raising up kids to love Jesus and to follow Jesus, it's going to put some gas in your tank. Some of you, your purpose is to invest in teenagers and to mentor them and to help them love God and to serve God and help them to make wise decisions to help them avoid the things that you got yourself into. Some of you, it's it's serving at Mabel Bassett. If you get on the dream team at Mabel Bassett and go start helping those ladies at the correctional facility and being light and helping disciple them, it's going to put gas in your tank. Some of you, 
used to have a bad marriage and God turned it around or you have a passion for marriage and you need to lead a marriage small group and when you start mentoring other young couples it's going to put gas in your tank some of you used to be addicted and God set you free and when you start helping other people get free say come on I'm going to help you get free you just lead your own small group to help people get free some of you maybe you've been divorced and, 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 and God healed you and helped you through the divorce and you can lead a small group to help other hurting people that have been divorced and help them get hope and healing in their life and it's a purpose that God's called you to some of you are great business leaders and great business owners and God is speaking to you about leading a business small group why? you're created to raise up business leaders you're, you're, raise up, you're called to raise up people to start their own companies and God wants to use you in that way. Some of you are good with finances and God wants you to, to lead a financial peace group or help others. Grab some young couples, grab some, some singles and say, I'm going to help you learn how to steward your money well. What I want you to understand is when you start making disciples, when you start serving others, when you start investing in others, when you start living out your purpose, God will put gas in your life tank because you were created on purpose for a purpose you were created on purpose for a purpose and when you start living out your purpose God puts fuel in your tank church own your health in 2024 nobody can own it for you get emotionally mentally spiritually physically healthy own it I close with our theme our theme verse for the series Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. So then, my beloved, just as you've always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now more in my absence, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Nobody can work it out for you. Work out your health with fear and trembling. Work out out your emotional and mental health with fear and trembling. Father, thanks for your word today. Thanks for your presence. Thanks for speaking to us today. I thank you for pulling some people out of the miry pit, helping people right now that are emotionally and mentally in a bad place. Help them recognize the warning signs. Help them realize how they got there. Help them to, to listen to spiritual guidance and spiritual counsel, Lord. Help them to do the practical things. Help them to get in the presence of the Lord. Help them, Lord, to begin to live out their purpose. God, I pray that people are running low in their gas tank, that you would begin to fill their gas tank back up as they begin to apply this message to their life. Jesus name I pray as eyes are closed and heads are bowed you're here and you're far away from God you don't know the Lord you're at one of our locations today you're not serving God today you're not living for Jesus you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior it's evident by how you live your life you're not living for Jesus you're not serving God and today you need to give your life to Jesus some of you used to live for God you used to serve God but if you're honest with yourself today you're not living for God you're living for you you're trying to please you you're doing what you want to do you might be adding a little Jesus to it, but you're not surrendered to Jesus. And today's your day to give your life to the Lord or to rededicate your life to Jesus. If that's you, as I count to three, would you raise your hand high? And I want to lead you in a prayer to say yes to Jesus. Today is the day to get right with God. Not tomorrow. Today is the day. As I count to three, lift your hand high. One, two, three. Just raise it high and say, Pastor, that's me. I see your hand. See your hand there. Others today. See your hand. Others. Come on, Midwest City, Northwest, Edmond, Mabel Bassett. Just lift it high online, Indianapolis. Come on, let's just somebody else. Just lift it high. Come on, every location. You need to give your life to Jesus. You need to recommit your life to the Lord. Just lift it high. That's it. That's it. That's it. Others today. Others. I'm going to ask you, every hand that's lifted right now to pray this prayer with me online, click the raise your hand button. Just right now, pray this prayer with me. Confess it with your mouth. Believe it in your heart. God's going to wash away your sins. Pray with me now, Heavenly Father. I turn away from my life of sin. And I turn my life over to Jesus Christ. I believe he's the son of God. He died on the cross. He rose again. And today I confess Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. And I will live for him the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.